It's about a quarter to one in the morning in the Townsville suburb of Munding Borough. Two young people manage to open the screen door of this home and head inside. A few minutes later, they return with keys. And so begins a two and a half hour joyride, all caught on dash cam. Copper tasting it. Copper back there. Go, go. Just run the red, run the red, go. The car belongs to Rick Monk. Fly straight. Looking at the speeds heading up to about 120 kilometres per hour and knowing that it's anything could have happened, another vehicle could have come out. Public safety is at risk here in a big way. Yeah. At one point, the police pull up behind the car at a red light. Please move right behind us. This police car turns off, but another seems to engage a short time later. Make them scared again. The police are now coming up behind, they're flashing their lights, but they have to back off and they can't pursue. Where we got fuel up, boys? Did they stop chasing? Their night finally ends after they try and fail to refuel. You have to come on three pipes. Just stash the car, we're gonna get another one. Rick got his car back, but the experience has left its mark. I was asleep here on the couch. I had the TV going. The back camera shows them going past here over a half a dozen times. It's pretty scary. Very scary, especially when I know that I'd cooked dinner and there was my kitchen knife sitting here on the bench. Since then, I've spent over $10,000 installing uh, stainless steel security grills. The anxiety stays with you. Um, I, th I don't think we'll ever leave. Bad boys. Yeah, a wiggly one. <laughs> it's an anxiety Tanya and Shane Cameron understand all too well. Neither of us sleep well at night at the moment. In April, a group of young people used a crowbar to break down the door to their garage, found the keys inside and stole both their cars. It's the brazenness of breaking down a door at 6am while the family of five slept that has shaken Tanya. I just don't feel safe in my own home. We've got cameras on every corner of this house. We've got all deadlocks. But if they want to get in, they still manage to get in. That's it. The family can't afford to replace both vehicles and have spent thousands on hire cars, extra security and counselling. We haven't even heard from the police to say whether or not these kids that took our cars have been caught or they're not being held accountable. What's cool, cars? 240. Look at that. Complaints about young people stealing cars are all over social media here in Townsville. And there is real community anger about a perceived lack of consequences for offenders. The issue has become one of the central themes of the upcoming Queensland election. Townsville is the epicentre of the youth crime crisis. Already this year, we've seen a 10% reduction in youth offending here in Townsville. Task Force Guardian has been established to deal with any spikes in youth offending. The government has subsidised vehicle immobilisers and late last year, a new police helicopter was introduced in Townsville. We've seen a reduction in car thefts in Townsville. We know that our officers feel safer when those helicopters are there. Under public pressure, earlier this year, Premier Stephen Miles announced he would remove detention as a last resort from the state's youth justice principles. The community rightly expects that if a young person is a risk to community safety, that they will be detained. While the opposition Liberal National Party wants sentences for young people who break into homes or steal cars increased. We must send a message if you do the crime, you will be punished. Adult crime, adult time. 
The statistics do show that in the past five years, the total number of offences in Townsville has been trending upwards. Car thefts are also up, although down from a peak in late 2023. It's a remarkably similar story when it comes to unlawful entries. Nick Demetto is the local member for Hinchinbrook, which includes the northern suburbs of Townsville. He wants laws changed to deter criminals. People want to know that if they were startled in the middle of the night, and uh, if one of those young offenders went to attack them, they would have the law on their side if they were to defend themselves. Mr Demetto and his fellow Catters Australian Party representatives recently sponsored a petition to introduce castle law in Queensland, which would give people the right to use whatever force necessary to protect themselves against home invaders. This petition opened for five weeks and garnered 40,000 signatures. If people knew that by crossing, I guess, the threshold or the Rubicon of the front door, uh, they knew that the people behind that front door had the right to defend themselves. Maybe those youth offenders, all the way through the adult offenders, may second guess uh, taking on that risk. Are you worried that non-violent intruders could be injured or even killed? They might not be entering the premise to hurt or maim someone, but at the same time, they shouldn't be in that premises to start with. Castle law is not part of either major party's policy platform. What people need to realise is some of these kids, they feel more safer out in the streets, you know. There could be things happening at home that we don't really see. Anthony Watton is a local social worker who says new laws or harsher sentences will only create future problems. Deep down, these young people are damaged and locking them up for a long period of time without rehabilitation and close mentoring, nothing will change. And they go in as, you know, angry young teens or angry young kids and they'll come out as violent and aggressive adults. Figures from the Queensland Department of Youth Justice show that in the 12 months to April last year, 286 young people were subject to detention orders, 257 re-offended within 12 months. The year before, of the 248 detained, 226 re-offended. Mr Watton says it's clear detention isn't working to address the causes of crime. That's something he has personal experience with. My early teenage years, it was very full on, very rough, you know. I was a very angry young person. I went down the wrong track, hanging around with kids that were doing crime and then I sort of got into that as well and a lot of aggressive behaviour and hate for my own individual lifestyle. I know what they're sort of going through the family environment and sort of the aggression that they have. Anthony was able to turn his life around and is dedicated to giving others that chance through mentoring and cultural programs run by Enabling Pathways. Culture is identity and identity gives us purpose. It is making a difference and it may not be as big as everyone wants it to be, but it's one less child that's in a jail cell.